You take a micro niche community approach. That's what I'd like to call yep. it, right? Yep. I've seen you on podcast that you know, had 200 viewers, right? And some people would look at that and say, this is important, this iconic, this man speaking to, but you know what? That is called laser. That yes. is not called shotgun. Right. That is called converting 199 of those 200 instead of the two million folks and converting two. Well, you have to think about it as a religion, just like, uh, you know, again, I'm not Jesus, but when you, when you look at Jesus and you're thinking, uh, you know, he touched each person right. and he tried to convert them and Absolutely. make them do, be the best they can be. Absolutely. Uh, I feel that cryptocurrencies are here to help the average Joe mm -hmm. to be the best person they can be because it, the pyramids that we all live in, mm -hmm. in which we are working for a guy that makes money, who makes money, right? And we're all working for the guy at the top of the pyramid. We, we hope, uh, hoping trickle-down economics works. Exactly, but it doesn't, it right? Doesn't. I mean, we have, we have 200 years of proof that it's not happening, and, and it's Thank you. worse than ever. Thank you. <laughs> and, I, and again, I'm saying that as a guy that was at the top of the pyramid, yeah. right? I'm, I'm, I'm the converted. I'm right, the guy who right. ran to public companies and mm -hmm. made a lot of money. And, and you know, the guy, when I came to this country 30 years ago, the gap between the average employee and the CEO was between 15 and 20 times. Talk to me for a second Now about it's that. 300 times. I was just going to say, talk to me, because 30 years ago, you came from, where did you come from? I, I came from Israel, yeah. So you came from Israel. By the way, I visited Tel Aviv and... Yes. Yes. Great we'll just, place to live in. And we'll just say yes. <laughs> we'll leave yes. it at that. Uh, but how difficult do you think it is for an entrepreneur, a CEO, a, uh, just a founder or co-founder to get up off of their ass and come to the U.S.? What barriers do you see now that yes. weren't there 30 years ago? Well, so, so America was the dream of every entrepreneur, of every, uh, you know, everybody who wanted to build something or do something. Uh, it was to come here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the world has changed. So right, right. both, it's harder to get it here, right? It's, it's much harder to become an entrepreneur here. When I came, they told me I wasn't old enough. And now when I start a business, <laughs> they tell me I'm too old, right? <laughs> now they're like, oh, you didn't graduate Stanford and you're not 20? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're not allowed to start a business. Yeah, you know, who yeah. told you you can Wait. start a, do a startup? You're not 20. You didn't go to Stanford and you didn't drop out from Stanford. Exactly. You can't, you exactly. can't graduate. That's you right. You cannot graduate. Yeah. <laughs> That's totally, yes, against the rules. So, but also today the opportunities overseas are much better than they were 20 or 30 years ago. So sure. what you see when, uh, you know, and I, I teach in a lot of these places, you know, I give, I give lectures, Stanford, uh, you know, Columbia University and so on. Where do you see the opportunity? What, what countries now do you right. see the best opportunities so, for entrepreneurs? Right. So, so when, you go to a, when you go to an engineering school, you will see that the, most of them are Chinese, Indian and so on. Right. right. And they all go back to those countries. So mm. when, when they graduate or almost graduate, right, they say, okay, I'm not going to do my startup uh, in the United States. I'm going to take my brilliant idea and I'm going to take it back to China. I'm going to take it back to India and so on. So, mm -hmm. so we're losing a lot of that talent. I mean, the part of the beauty of this country and half of all the startups in the United States mm -hmm. are started by immigrants, right? Absolutely. So, so, so I think uh, this wave of innovation that has to do with blockchain mm -hmm. is, is an exceptional, it's something that's really, really good. And, and we have thousands of new startups just because of that. Yes. But most of it, the number one country for, for blockchain yeah. is China, it's not the United States. So you gave me one, China's one. What are the other two countries? India is definitely okay. one of the top. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have a lot of uh, small places that, that uh, like Eastern Europe, uh, yeah. a lot of people. Like a lot of little the number, Yeah, little yeah mm -hmm. like uh, a lot of startups are, are Russian startups, for example, for blockchain and, and crypto. Okay. So, so a, lot of, a lot of different places that are really, again, brilliant minds mm -hmm. that are willing to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We got a little spoiled us in the United we, States, you a, know. A little? A little. <laughs> and, and look, I, I have six kids at home and they all want to be oh, wow. the Kardashians. Congratulations. They, they don't oh. want to be dad. No, no, no. They, they don't want to do a they, they should run around startup. taping you. And from that, they should actually tell the kids, I said, follow you around. They should be right here inside the yes, audience right. right now. And that's how they should be building up because you're exposed to so much, which actually leads me to... Uh, an, how do you come up with these, these innovative ideas that you do come up with? Sure. Is, is, where do you pull... What's the... What's the secret well, sauce? So, Where do you so pull it from? E I, I believe that each one of us is brought to this planet for a reason, mm. and we have one thing that we are better than anybody else. Mm. The problem most of us have is that we don't know what we're really good at, and then we don't put all of our efforts around that. So we're wasting. Really so we, we do, I'll, I'll give it to you. Right? We're wasting a lot of our energy on the things that we're not exceptional at, right? Uh, and, and, and the key is to find that one thing that you're... Like when you see a star, when you see somebody who's exceptional at something, it's because they put all their efforts into that one thing. Very true. So I, I get lucky that early, very early in my, in, in my age, you know, when I was in my teens, 
I realized that I can come up with these ideas that no one thought about mm -hmm. uh, very, very quickly. Like they just, they just show up, you know. Did, I, did I you just travel think, young? Did you I travel just, when you were younger? No, to not, not exposure. Not really, but I, oh. I just think differently. Okay. Right. So I'm wired differently, and and and. And, but again, a lot of these ideas are bad ideas. It's not like every idea is brilliant, oh, yeah. you know? But that's, that's, that's so part that, of being an innovator. Exactly, right. and so it, takes, it took me a long time to figure out uh, how to differentiate between the good ideas and the bad ideas. And being too early is just as bad as being too late. Oh, so so when, you, when you get, yeah. exactly, when you yeah. get an idea and you're 10 years ahead of everybody else, you're there by all by yourself. You know what they and say everybody about, thinks you're, with it's pioneers, crazy. you're the first one to get the arrow right in the head. Yes. It's, is your cowboy hat That's thick right. enough to keep going? That's right. Is your skull thick enough and to keep going? And then you get them going? in the back. Oh you, oh, you always get them in the back. You got, you, you, <laughs> that just comes with the territory. Right, right. <laughs> so exactly. What, what achievements are, besides the six children, Yes. what achievements are you the most proud of? Well, I'm, I'm married to a, a beautiful wife who has a bigger career than me. That's fantastic. So I, I what does she do? Talk to me. Like what does she do? Chrissy Wyshynski, run, she runs Free People, which is a women Absolutely. apparel brand. She works for Urban Outfitters. I'm very aware of Free People. Yes. Very cool. So yeah. she's, she built that brand from scratch. And I look at her and ask myself every day, like, uh, what, what are you doing with me? <laughs> so you have six fashion, technology, entrepreneur. Yes. Wait a second. It's crazy living. From, the, from his... Brought in there into yes. the United States. Wow, that's right. that's kind of amazing, right. man. That's kind of so, amazing. Yeah, so yes, and and on you know it, it's we live in a really in an age where you know it, there's almost a revolution every day, mm. a revolution in music, revolution in fashion, revolution in everything else. So the opportunities have never been better for the average person. And that's why you like blockchain because it opens up that entryway. Yeah, it, blockchain reinvents all these old industries mm. in a new way. Right. So you can do blockchain on real estate, you can do blockchain fashion, you can do blockchain on medications, you mm. can do blockchain on finance, like we are focused on, right? right? Celsius Network is focused on that. So, right. and then you can bring it to everybody on the planet so mm -hmm. so the seven billion people on the planet who all need whatever you have to give them right so so if you really believe in it most people just don't believe in it and they don't believe that they can take that opportunity and run with it and become the number one and I look I, I met in my career I met a lot of these number one guys and you know, all the guys uh, the Google founders and the Skype founders and all these people and mm -hmm. and I can tell you they're no different than you and me it's right. not like they're exceptional and they're like right, they have right, right. Uh, you know an extra digit of IQ the, yeah right exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. they got lucky they were there at the right place at the right time and all the things all the chips fell the right way right they so, say a lot of it, it, it lands luck but being also prepared yeah yes exactly so, so so it's very important that your viewers understand that that, that you know yes it's a lot of hard work mm -hmm. but but unless you 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 never succeed in 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 what you didn't fail at right and failure is what points you towards success Absolutely. you have to fail to know that you have to go in that direction and you know what's interesting with that we spoke about adversity in gaming in the gaming world right when you find that you come up across uh, an enemy in a game it gets harder and harder you're closer to you're your getting goal better and better you're, yeah. you're, you're closer <laughs> you're, to being the best you can exactly. be exactly exactly so yes. that adversity is actually sharpening right your, your tools yes. for you right and forces so, you to think and and, and absolutely and, and so on absolutely yes. and that's what i think a lot of uh innovators entrepreneurs and and you know founders need to look at yes. that, that that shows challenges as the, strengthening your muscles to get over it and that's what it is i mean again it's it's you have to be the best in the world at something okay and and that that it, the passion comes with that the success comes with that the money comes with that right and all those things it's the things we really want right. uh, but we we rather go and copy somebody else we all look at the kardashians and gosh look at the brand they built right look at the billions of dollars they're making i want to be like them it's not about being like them it's about being the best you can be Absolutely. in in inventing the thing you can do better than anyone else right so what is celsius is going to do better than anyone else yes so so we are solving two very simple uh, problems right okay. one is that there's no access to credit around the world including the United States it's restricted really <laughs> It's and you know, right? and you cannot today. You cannot borrow dollars against your cryptos. If you're holding right. hundred thousand dollars worth of crypto and you want to withdraw the do uh, dollars, you have to sell the coins. Right. And by selling the coins, you have to pay taxes first, and then you can get access to the dollars. So right. we lend dollars against crypto, mm -hmm. right, and uh, enable people to basically defer their taxes, okay. and we enable people to get uh, basically access to credit. So you can take loans, you can build your business, right, and also you can earn. Uh, interest on your crypto. So today, most people have their crypto sitting in, in, in an exchange right. or sitting in, in, in a in wallet, wallet and, cold store, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's not earning anything. Right. So 
what if you could put it in a place that actually earned four or five percent per year, right? Mm. It's sitting here or sitting here. You're giving that guaranteed. Yes. yes. You're giving that guaranteed. So we, we charge we charge borrowers nine percent, and we give most of that back to the community. We give five percent out of the nine percent back to the community. Okay. And that's what banks were supposed to do. Right. It's just that banks take your money, give it to me, mm -hmm. give you one percent for the money at best, if mm -hmm. not zero, and then charge me twenty five percent of my money on, on your money. It's not yeah. their money. It's your money. And then the so they the, make the ninety five. How much exactly? Yeah, I know. So they make ninety-five percent of the value mm -hmm. with your money, right? Okay. That's like a legal robbery, right? And when they open twenty million bank fake bank accounts, like like Wells Fargo yeah, did, Wells Fargo no one gets punished, no one goes to jail, nothing right. happens, right? right? So. We're trying to disrupt all of that and replace it with a system that is for the people, by the people. So if you're going to use your capital, we're going to pay you a fair interest, 4 or 5%. Mm -hmm. And we're only going to charge the people who actually need help 9%. We don't do credit checks. We don't do uh, FICO scores because we don't need all of that, right? It's all What's the cap? How much can I take out? There's no limit. We have ICOs that borrowed $5 million or more. You're telling me, how are you scaling this? How can you scale, how, how, walk me, th this is. Okay, so uh, it's, yeah, it's very simple. Okay. So, so what do banks do? They take deposits from people, right? And then they lend it out uh, to other people. They charge them interest and they keep most of the profits, right? We take deposits from a lot of people. So we have tens of thousands of crypto depositors who give us their coins. Right. We use it, it's a proof of stake implementation. Mm -hmm. So we, they st everybody stakes their Bitcoin, so now we have, millions and millions of dollars of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. We have a lender that says, okay, you have all this Bitcoin, great, I'll give you dollars against that. And we lend the dollars out. The people that borrow the dollars give us interest. We then see, okay, who gave us that pile of Bitcoin? And we distribute the interest to all the people who gave us the Bitcoin. What's stopping them from going to buy more Bitcoin gaming the system? Well, so we, it's much easier to do that on an exchange without going through everything I just talked about. True. So mm -hmm. we, we're not trying to, we're actually making it hard for you to leverage buy with our system because okay. what we're trying to do is help people who need to pay their bills or put their kids through college or do you have these in separate silos because those are very uh, focused areas you yeah know, pay student your loans kid, yeah, paying your stu right so if, student if your student loans. loans are 15 percent just refinance with us and it'll cost you nine percent hmm. as, as long as you have crypto but we're only doing it to crypto holders okay. right so and that, and the whole idea is you want these cheap loans you have to become a crypto holder hmm. so if you're on the outside and you have a 25 percent debt on your credit cards you can refinance but you have to buy crypto and you have to c come and join the community Right, so then okay. everybody benefits because all the money stays inside the community, right? right? Okay. The, and that, we had that, it used to be called community banks. Hey, the, uh, they oh, yes, they yes, took yes. the money from the guy that mm -hmm. took the mortgage and mm -hmm. they gave it to the guy to open the gas station and the pizzeria within these your community. This is, these are the credit unions yes. that were supposed to be there for but us. But they're all disappearing because the big banks sell your mortgage to a guy in Germany or a guy in Japan and none of that money stays in the community. Do you right? plan on opening up physical locations in the, for the United States market so that they can, so that folks can get more, uh, I guess, acclimated with uh, these digital assets? So, look, right? we have an app. Uh, most people, most millennials uh, want to see it on an app. You know, there, there was a recent survey that said, uh, that compared all the things that uh, millennials will not do mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the worst was that they said, okay, if you have to go into a bank. I was just going to say, they have to walk in, if they have to walk into the bank. If you have to bank, walk into a bank, they said, I'd rather go to the dentist than go into a bank. That's harsh. That's how bad it is. So I don't believe in physical locations, but mm. I, all millennials can download an app. It sells you a network. You can just download an Apple or Android. Mm. And in a few clicks, you can open an account and either deposit coins or get a loan. It's so that simple. So you are focused on the new, the old regime, let them bank exactly. the way they want to bank, exactly. the millennials on, and the ones that the understand. The Gen Xs, the millennials, the Gen Xs, around exactly. the world. That's a billion people Absolutely. around the world. And they all need this. You yeah. see, there isn't anyone on the planet who does not need more credit. Mm. There isn't anyone on the planet who does not need to earn more interest. So you want to make crypto into the biggest thing ever? Mm. Give them two things that everybody needs. Right. right now, most of the stuff we have where we're sending coins to each other. Credit and redemption, what's the two things that they need? Interest, income, and credit. <laughs> credit and redemption. I didn't get it the first time. <laughs> you quick. So yeah, serious. Going seriously. back to Jesus, right? <laughs> Bringing it right back around. Yes. I got the credit, but um, uh, can you forgive him, brother? Yes. <laughs> Three Hail Marys and you're good to go. Thank no you. problem. Listen, so this is this is interesting because for new businesses, right? I'm I'm a credit holder. I want to start off a new business. I have uh, uh you know I, I don't have 20k in coin, and uh, I'm looking to start off. I want to yes. have a small loan. Do I have a waiting list? No. Celsius. There's no waiting list. 
you take the app, you, you apply. Uh, we, do, we do do KYC and AML check, right, so we right. don't want bad actors ruining the system, the game for everybody What's else. What's a bad actor? A bad actor is somebody who has uh, basically is on a list, on a bad per okay, person list. There is a list. Right? The no fly list, the terrorist list. Yes. The, we're not talking about someone, even if you had a bankruptcy, like, you know, obviously Trump had four bankruptcies. That didn't, that that didn't, didn't stop, stop him, him from anything. Exactly. So, <laughs> so we, we don't judge people based on that. If, okay. if you, people that try to build a business and fail, that should not stop them from joining the middle class again. Okay. Right? So, so we are just looking at your ability to earn. Right, but not based on the credit score, based on, okay, I have these assets and I want to take a loan. I'm going to use it for this or that. And the community, really, we represent the community. We don't, it's not like our money because the money belongs to, to the, the community. community. It's you're, all the deposit we, we got from everybody. Now, and I, we're giving the, the returns back to the community. So more than half of everything we collect goes back into the community as distributions. Hmm. Now, our competition, charges twice as much, instead of 9%, they charge 18 to 24%. I'm aware. And I'm aware. they give nothing back to the community. Okay. It's all accumulated by the guys inside the company. So we just don't think, I mean, if you're in crypto, why are you doing it? Right. If you're not trying to help, help the out people, the community, why are you why, here? You know, you're like, trying to stay, exactly. you're, you're part of the reason why we started so, the community. So I, I, I urge all of your viewers, when they invest in something or buy something, also to see, are these people a real crypto uh, uh, favorites? Are real, mm. they're here to help us? Right. Or they're here just to take advantage of the cryptocurrency. You're speaking about analysis of other of other companies. How do you analyze what company that you invest in? Yeah, so I, I'm extremely critical of, of exchanges, for example. I mm -hmm. think exchanges are ruining it all for all of us. Mm -hmm. when, when Binance announces they're going to make a billion dollars this year, it's all coming out of your and my exactly. pocket. Right, it's right, not right. like they're printing it somewhere in the, in the back office press. So how do you so, choose? Well, make sure they're not a, an exchange. So we're not listing on any of those exchanges. If an right. exchange if, if exchange is not transparent and doesn't show us that they're doing everything in the best interest of the customer. Mm -hmm. So right now we're only on IDEX. IDEX is a, is a peer to peer exchange. Okay. Uh, we're going to be listed on the DX exchange, which is a, a NASDAQ affiliated exchange that's in London okay. that's going, that is fully transparent. You can see all the transaction. You can see that they're not front running you. They're not shorting you. They're not using your money for other purposes. Okay. And, and, and we, that's what we're going to do. We're partnering with these type of people okay. and we're adding them to our wallet. So when you trade uh, using our wallet, you're also trading only with people that are good for the community. So think of the community as, a, as, as this protector of yours. You don't need to know everything about these companies. Right, right. But like, just like with Costco, when you walk into Costco, you know mm. they did everything for you. They, they went through the, they, they exactly. already vetted everything that's under their that's umbrella. That's what we do. We that's are like the, the Costco version of financial services. So shifting gears for a second, when you look at companies to invest in yourself, yes, other ICOs. Yes, right? I'm presenting on that in like an hour. Okay, well, so, this is so, yeah, I have a whole, I get several slides on that. You have a warm up. I get so, warm up. Yeah, <laughs> so so the, the team is is the most important thing. Right. Is it, did this team work together before? Are they uh, do they have the experience? Did they deliver something together mm. of value? Right. It doesn't mean they create they made a lot of money. It just means did they build something amazing? Okay. Right. Because that's what they're going to have to do again and again and again. Right. All right. Who are the investors? Who backed up these people? And again, it doesn't mean like you need the richest people in the world. It just if, if these are sophisticated Trusted. people who know what they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, then you know that okay, because you know you never want to be the first guy in and think that you're the smartest guy. No one else has, has, has figured this out, right. but you're going to figure this out. So okay. I always recommend for people to look at who else is in there and actually call them and verify. Do your due diligence exactly, and, and get through. Most people, like people ask me, are you a real investor here? Are you an advisor to this company? Right. I always answer my emails or, or text or telegram because it's important. People need to know what to participate and what not part to participate in. You're hitting on something which is transparency and trust again. Yes. Like even in your personal endeavors, you're still allowing folks to get yes. to, to dig right into your life yes. and, and be exposed to it. So I, I think that's great. And, so, and look, this is what cryptocurrencies and, and, the, and the public blockchain is all about. So when, when I see Tether and all these other systems, and I'm, I'm, I'm free to talk about that. A lot right. of people sit there, I'm sure they wouldn't talk well, to you as open as I, I am. Yeah, I see you're pretty open with a lot, yeah. but, but again. So Tether is an example. Yeah. As an advocate of, of blockchain, Yes. That's amazing. That we, you we're just it not going to gonna get there. We're not going right. to get there if all of us don't do the right thing and right. talk about it and open it up and so Very on. True. Right? Very so, true. Very So Tether and other companies that are in the space that are holding billions of dollars of all of our money, mm -hmm. if they're not transparent, you have to ask yourself why they're not. Okay. Like, for example, we post on our blockchain every transaction that we do. Mm -hmm. So everybody can see how, much, how many loans did we do, who got the loans, what did we charge them, who received the money from the loans, 
who how did we distribute the money? Like, did you, if you got 1% out of the distribution, mm -hmm. is that fair or not fair? Right. You can go and check that, right? Okay. So we use the blockchain as the mechanism of transparency. Right, and in the way that you're using it, it seems like it's the more, one of the most practical, yes, logical. And, and ask yourself, why is, wouldn't your bank use that? Well, we know right? the reason. We know the reason okay. exactly. So I want to. They wouldn't so be able much. to open those 20 million fake bank accounts. Oh, you really go for the jugular with Wells Fargo, brother. You really go I'm for so it. I'm so pissed that no one went to jail on that. You know what? You know, I if tell I you. make one mistake. The, the regulator will shut me down because I'm I, in crypto. I would be talking you know? to you over a f through a exactly, phone right now. Exactly. Alex, what happened? But, but the, these guys at the top, you know, Goldman Sachs, all these guys endangered the entire financial system in 2008. Yes, they did. And then they come out, they make billions of dollars, record, record numbers, right? Uh, record uh, bonuses in 2009, a year after the major collapse, mm -hmm. right? M new record bonuses, right? And then they go and do, do all the shenanigans and nothing, nothing mm -hmm. happened. And that's why Satoshi wrote in his white paper that, that basically we cannot fix the old system. Mm -hmm. It's not like about going we and we and going power. to Washington and parading or whatever, or, or, or whatever, or inventing some fintech solution like Nouriel was talking about right. and, and fixing the system. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> you got to create a system for the people, by the people. Okay, I understand. And that's why I, I jumped in. I'm just, I'm just carrying Satoshi's flag. It's okay. not like I created my own religion. I mean, Satoshi, I think, was the first one to put together all the pieces and set, showed us the way. And now we need to take it from here and really make it happen. Well, that is a fantastic way to walk into this next panel that we're about to go on stage with. And I appreciate you so much for speaking with me. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. Good to as see always. you. Yeah. That was good to see you too.